movies, um, and I always thought very highly of him. I thought at the very least that Jesus was a great man, a prophet, or maybe even the Son of God. I wasn't really sure, but I had great admiration for him. You see, that is the way that a lot of people feel toward Jesus Christ. There are many people who have high regard for him. In fact, many of them fill churches every weekend. However, Jesus didn't say, admire me. He said, follow me. Nor did he say, follow my people. No, he said, follow me. We have all met people who claim to be Christians, but, but turned out to be hypocrites. And probably the number one excuse people give for not going to church is there are too many hypocrites. Well, maybe our response needs to be, well, there's always room for one more, so come on in. Just because someone claims to be a Christian and messes up, falls short or does something wrong, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a hypocrite. It means they are human. And I'm not making excuses for anyone. I'm simply saying that even though followers of Jesus Christ will have moments when they do and say things they wish they hadn't done or hadn't said, when Jesus used the term hypocrite to describe the self-righteous people of his day, he used a word in the original Greek that meant actor. A hypocrite is a person who's putting on a performance. It's someone who's pretending to be something they really are not. You see, you can fool all the people some of the time. You can, feel, you can fool some people all the time. But you can't fool God any of the time. He knows what is going on. So let's acknowledge the fact that there are hypocrites in church. And this doesn't mean that Jesus Christ isn't real or that his words aren't true. In fact, if you go um, and if you look at a mark in, in the market, there are so many cheap knockoffs. Well, what that confirms to me is the fact that there are actually quite a lot of genuine articles out there. Jesus Christ um, never will let you down. He never will fail you. And I know this because Jesus said it. But I also know it um, from my own personal experiences. I've gone through my times of challenge and difficulty and even tragedy. And when I hear people say that they've lost their faith because of a crisis that they've been through, I sometimes wonder to myself, actually, if they've lost their faith, or is it a question that they may not have had the faith to begin with? The Bible tells the story of a man named Matthew, who left everything to follow Jesus. He left his career, his wealth, his possessions and power. And you know what? Jesus had only two words for him. Now, there are a lot of conversations that Jesus had with various people. In the Gospel of John, in chapter 3, we read of a prolonged conversation that he had with, that he had with Nicodemus. And then in the next chapter, we read that he had a conversation with an immoral woman. So what did Jesus say to Matthew? He simply told him, and he only gave him two words. He said, follow me. You see the Parthian foot races last night? Darius ran like a gazelle. Jews don't go to foot races. Your old friend Simon himself used to run the wagering tables. We're not friends. Next. Okay, fine. So you did not go to the races. You stay home? I went to see my mother. Ugh. That would put me out, too. She asked when you're going to give her grandchildren? She didn't ask. I thought your parents don't speak to you. I had questions I couldn't ask anyone else. 
A mother of a son with talent like yours should be proud. She's ashamed that I could use a talent that God gave. Must be nice to live in a world so simply ordered. We live in the same world, Matthew. Next. Besides, what else are you going to do with a mind like yours? Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to... What are you doing? Where do you think you're going, guys? Let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. I'm glad we passed by your booth today, Matthew. Yes. Shall we? We have a celebration to prepare for. You will regret this, Matthew. What's the tablet for? I grabbed it without thinking. I can put it back. No, no, keep it. You may yet find use for it. Where are we going? A dinner party. I'm not welcome at dinner parties. Well, that's not going to be a problem tonight. You're the host. What an amazing depiction. Right then and there, Matthew stood up from this table where he was sitting and followed Jesus. Then the Bible tells us, later Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as, din as dinner guests along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked the disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such, well actually, such scum, such, such people that you do not want to mix with? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. That is, you know, that's one true fact. There, there are two places that I don't like to go. In a sense, it's the, to the doctor's office or maybe to the dentist. Why? Because it's because we don't want to hear bad news. You know, go to the doctor and he says, well, you've got high blood pressure. What do you mean I have high blood pressure? Well, every time I see you, doctor... My blood pressure goes up, so that is why I have high blood pressure. We don't like to go to places because we don't like to hear bad news. Matthew, like all of us, was sick spiritually, but there was no treatment. There was no pull for his condition. It was a condition um, that Matthew inherited, and ultimately it was fatal. It's a condition called sin, and we are all born with it. We are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. It comes naturally. I've never ever had to sit down with my two children and say to them, okay, 
Today I want to teach you how to sin. They knew how to do it entirely on their own. Just like I did. Just like you do. The Bible says in Romans 3, Everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. It goes on, it says, The wages of sin is death. You see, Matthew was a tax collector, which meant that he effectively worked for the enemy. Rome was the occupying force in Israel at the time, and the tax collectors collected taxes for Rome, added more, and pocketed the surplus. Now, we don't know whether Matthew did this particular thing, but, but I can tell you one thing. Tax collectors were not popular people. They were barely above plankton on the food chain. And as a result, Matthew had no friends. Just a lot of people who wanted nothing to do with him. I don't know what drove Matthew to that lifestyle. But he had no doubt um, that was watching Jesus. A tax collector knew what was happening in town. He knew of any business transactions that took place. He would, he would have watched Jesus t- talking to people. He would have heard his teachings And Matthew really knew the scriptures. In his own gospel that he wrote, um, he made more than 99 references to the Old Testament. You see, Jesus knew who Matthew was too. And he ultimately called him. He just said two words, follow me. Maybe you know the Bible. Maybe you've never had a relationship with Jesus himself. I'm not talking about religion. I have no interest in religion. And I don't want to become a religious person. On the other hand, I am very interested in a relationship with God. And that is what knowing Jesus Christ is all about. I think something that this pandemic has taught me, and I think there's something that I feel that God has been I don't know, placed in my heart for us, for me as an individual, for my family, um, for the church that I lead. Maybe it's just coming back to the heart of it all. Just coming back to those simple words, but I know they are so loaded that it's they are not easy. The words, follow me. Instead of chasing to do this or to do that, or this is how... God would want us to be or this is what perfect church would look like or this is actually maybe it is time that we just simply get back to basics get back to following Jesus for who he is taking his scriptures um, and not just reading them for knowledge sake but actually reading them and understanding and discovering what God's plan is for us. Discovering how can I actively, every single day in 2021, how can I live those words out? How can I live by the the values and the principles that Jesus teaches us in the Bible? I think that that is what God is calling us back to. He's calling us back to an intimate love relationship with Him, not built on all the entertainment that we find out there and sometimes even in church but actually let's get back into a relationship with Jesus where we are his disciples where we are his followers where we where we listen to his teaching and we 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 change and we adapt and our lives are transformed to being more like he was that is ultimately the goal the ultimate goal is that we would be more like Jesus I know I can't be Jesus because he's the son of God and I'm not. But we can certainly um, aim. We can certainly try our very best just to um, live by those principles. Maybe it requires us just to kind of slow down and and maybe have a slightly simpler approach. A more, um, yeah, just a different approach to what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And not to be chased and... Um, and chasing after everything like the world. Yes, we might be um, in this world, but we're not, we're not 
We're not from this world. We are not the same. Maybe you are watching this message this morning and you're thinking, wow, well, yeah, something is stirring in me and those words, follow me. Maybe Jesus through the Holy Spirit is, is just nudging you and it's just calling those words out to you this morning. If that is you, um, I want to invite you. I want to invite you to say your yes to Jesus. If that is you, pray the following prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came to give your life for me. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I fall short of how you have designed me to be. In this moment, I accept you as my Lord and my Saviour. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into my life, that you would guide me and lead me in the ways of Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you've prayed that prayer this morning, I want to say to you, welcome to the family. It is so great that you um, have said your yes to Jesus. Why don't you send us an email at prayer at brentwoodvineyard.org and we'd love to engage with you. We'd love to, to share this with you. There's joy. There's a, there's a party being thrown in heaven because of your decision this morning. So, um, yeah, have an amazing, amazing week. And today is the start of a new day for you. And I want to bless you in Jesus' name. So until next time, have an amazing week. See you then. Our rights and our freedoms Our flags and our kingdoms All of our idols must bow Our wars and our weapons Our worldly possessions All of our idols must bow You have our yes Jesus is Lord We'll take up the cross No matter the cost We say Jesus is Lord He is Lord Our selfish ambition for power and position All of our idols must bow Our fearful reactions And constant distractions All of our idols must bow You have a yes Jesus is Lord We'll take up the cross No matter the cost We say Jesus is Lord We'll say Jesus is Lord And our joy is to hold Beside Jesus, our Savior, to love those who hate us, embracing our neighbors, to lay down our lives for the poor and the needy. The cross is our call and our only allegiance to Jesus, our Lord.
spirit to honor you, Jesus, as Lord. Our love and affection, our time and attention, Lord, you deserve it all. Lord, you deserve. Lord, you can have it all.